Hey y'all, this is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. All things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who's called according to his purpose. God has sent Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Freedom, my friends. That season may not be the thing that you wanted necessarily, but God needs you to learn something. Hindsight with God, you understand, but in the middle of stuff, you just gotta hang on and trust Him. We're not supposed to do for God, we're supposed to be for God. The doing is a side effect. Mm -hmm. God is able to bless you abundantly. If He can take care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, so more can He do for you. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just continue to stay humble, seek God, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose for Him. And I don't know what you're looking at today or where you're going, but I know that God is our everything. He's our fruits of the Spirit. He's our joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, He is our everything, and thank God we get to look to Him to be the master of our lives and the author of our story. Today, we're talking with Sarah Soul Webb. She's a painter of water and God's creation, is your title on Instagram. Love that, yeah. Yeah. Mom of three. Yes, three small children. And wife. Yes, wife to Andy of um, 16 years. Wow. What a unique and beautiful gifting you have. I mean, not just to jump into it. I feel like we know who you are. You know, how did God call you to do this? That's a great question. Um, Yeah, so I paint um, large-scale water paintings. Yeah. Um, My bread and butter is painting portraits of children swimming. I mean, I think we all start out as artists. I was an artist as a child, as every child was. No, Um, no, no, no. I was not an artist. Yes, you were. I bet you were. (laughs) Really? Um, But I feel like that was not like squashed out of me. And my mom really encouraged that and had teachers that saw a spark in me. And so I've just always considered myself an artist. I've been full time with art about 10 years. Uh, The first 10, 15 years of my adult life, I was a registered dietitian. Um, So... I've always painted on the side and art has always been a part of my life, really. So, um, and now I get to do it four or five days a week and I love it. Registered dietitian. Yes. My parents wanted me to get like a real job, you know, air yes, quotes. <laughs> a real job. And yeah. you were like, I just want to create. I just want to paint. Well, it, you know, also I took a, a few art classes in college and um, I'm, I, I like happy art, you know, I like yes. colorful, happy beautiful things. And that was not like what was wanted in college art. (laughs) Um, you know, they just, I wasn't like, I didn't have the the torture to put into the the canvas there that they needed. So, um, anyways, and that's okay. Like art doesn't have to make you cry or, or I don't know. It it can be, you know, I've, I've come to that realization that art can be happy and meaningful as well. You know, it doesn't have to be just tortured and yeah. (laughs) And someone naked. Right. That's what I think. Like in college, I'm like, somebody came in naked and right. they, they, they painted a picture of a naked person. That's what happened. It can be other things. Like how did God take you from a position of learning about art? You know, you're learning about all these different styles to what you are doing now. Because, I mean, I've said this with other people who have come on the podcast. I've never seen anything like it. Like how did God take you to a place of, I want to be an artist, to I am a painter of water and God's creation? That's a, okay, great question. Um, well, when I first started doing this seriously, probably about 13 years ago, mm-hmm. um, it was on my weekends, um, actually maybe about 10 years ago is when I um, had my oldest child. And it just felt, making art felt so vain, I hate yeah. to say that. Like, it costs money. You know, it, it the, the equipment, the supplies, all that stuff. It takes money. It takes time. And it felt so vain just to make something. Um, 
and and I kept I kept praying to God. I was like, how how do I glorify you instead of myself, right? And um, so I started painting um, churches. I have a lot of like, uh, and I haven't done. My mom's always like, go back to your church paintings. Um, but I I did a lot of church interiors, and um, and then that kind of morphed into um, trees and trees no becoming way. churches like kind of the branches reaching up and arching into like a gothic arch and you know I just wanted to glorify God I wanted to point to him instead of pointing to myself and my own my own talent or something you know yes. everything I have is from the Lord and um the time that I the free time I had was from the Lord and yeah. the resources to spend you know to buy a canvas was from God and so I wanted I just didn't I can so easily make things about me. So I know. Well, I can too. I right. mean, it's so easy. Anybody right. listening to this, Very like, easy. have you taken a selfie? Like, mm-hmm. come on. I mean, we took a selfie earlier. Right. But in the process of going through life, it is so easy to think about ourselves. But Matt Chandler, he's a pastor in Texas, and he has talked about in his sermons that if all you think about is yourself, you're going to be so miserable. Right. And in that time of giving it back to God, surrendering it, like that's an action of like, I am surrendering this to you, God. I'm acknowledging you. I'm thanking you. That is an action that we do. It doesn't come natural. Like my kids want chocolate chip cookies, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like that's not, it's not like in them to want to eat something healthy or do something that's good for their body. So making that decision to paint a church and then do trees and this idea of not wanting it to be vain, like that's so relatable to me. I love that. Yeah. Anybody who has a gifting or a calling, it's like, I'm, but I'm really good at it. (laughs) You know what I mean? How do you give that back to God? Yeah. And that's what you've done. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Well, so then the trees just morphed into a lot of flowers and trees and um, water has always been a huge part of my life being from Pensacola. Yes. Um, And a lot of the water uh, as a subject matter, I think, came from just a longing to be home. You know, we were living in Birmingham for 15 years, 17 years probably. Um, Wow. And I just, I missed Pensacola. I missed my parents. I missed... um, um, I miss the water. I mean, it, it's in you. When you grow up on the water, I don't care where. I don't know if you know if it's Maine or or any coast. I mean, you, it's just in you. And yeah. and when you're away from it, there's something that you're just. It's like a longing, you know. And yes. so I painted. I started painting water, and in the same way that churches pointed to God, I've kind of I view my current or my my niche, I guess, is like it's a it's a reflection of the heavens, right? Like mm-hmm. I. I I have this like wild, messy underpainting. Um, and then I paint this not perfect, but like a very beautiful, like yeah. perfect, perfect, um, top layer that, that reflects the sky. And so I guess I view that as, as I'm trying to glorify him and, and point to him and all that I do and not just make everything about Sarah, which exactly. is so easy <laughs> to do <laughs> my portrait, my portrait, my portrait. Well, and these are pictures of someone's children that you're doing like in yeah. the pool. So that's been a fun th- little thing that I feel like I've come up with. Um, they're just yeah. silly. And I don't know about you, but I grew up, um, we have the formal oil portrait of all of my, me and my siblings. No, you do not. Um, with like the, the lace collar and the perfect, you know, you've got kids, right? Like yeah. we, I, this is not how I know my children. Like they exactly. are never sitting still and they are um, never neat. And I don't know. I loved this idea. I called them quirky portraits. Like um, just quirky. capturing this like messy, wild, funny stage of childhood, you know, yeah. with the missing teeth and the, you know, blowing bubbles or holding her nose. And um so I guess that's how I want to remember my kids. And that's what I yeah. want to capture for other people. And the cool thing is, uh, you know, with artists, like we can get into these portraits or commissions and you can feel really stifled with your artwork, but it's like, that's what makes money. Exactly, but yeah, yeah. this is, this has allowed me to, um, to have a bread and butter to, to have a consistent income and um, also do what I love with that. And then, I, so I book a few of those a month and then I book a few months in advance. So I've, it, it's just, it's given me some peace in knowing that I'm, I'm right where I need to be. And if I finish my commissions for the month, then I will, what I say, I call it like paint for me. Um, you know, like a non-commission yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah, me time. So <laughs> yeah, that goes to a restaurant or it might sell immediately on social media or it might sit in my studio for a year. But um, I've kind of developed like a really good rhythm with, with that. That is so 
neat after you do your work, you know, that makes money, you know, you're being responsible, you're being a good steward of your gifting, you know, you're making a a profit, you're being a Proverbs 31 woman, you know, you're selling your stuff. But then you're putting a fun element into it where I can see it makes you not obsess over the next commission project. Like you're able to, like they say in our spin class, like they'll be like, get up on your bikes and like shake it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you're able to have fun and then stretch and then go back into the grind of the projects and doing these masterpieces for people. My question to you is like, when you're doing art, that's a lot of time to just sit and think, you know, not sit, but just like you're thinking. Right. Do you ever hear God's voice while you're painting or how is his relationship with your work? I was telling my husband recently, we're very different, but I don't know about you. I never stop talking. Like in my head, I have a continuous inner monologue. Do you do this? Do you talk yeah. all the time? I mean, I do. Like yeah. I, I, it's like, there's I always, have to work on it. Yeah. It's and not, it's, it's it doesn't bad. stop. Mine doesn't stop. Yeah. And I get it. my husband on the other hand is like, I feel like he's like silent inside unless he's mm-hmm. like hungry or like working or. Well, that's <laughs> men though. That was in a book. I think it's women are spaghetti and men are like yeah, waffles. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And men can actually think about nothing. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot fathom that. I mean, however, yeah. when I'm painting, I feel like my brain's silent um, in a great way. I do. I've got my music that I put on. I put on yes. the same, I'd say the same like five artists that I've listened to for almost 10 years now. It's it's almost like a, you remember Zoolander when he puts on the <laughs> relax, don't do it. You know that yes, song? Yes, and it yes. turns him into like an yeah, assassin. Okay, exactly. that's how I am with my <laughs> music. Because <laughs> if I put on, you know, Florence and Machines or Muse yes. or whatever, like I go straight into like, making art mode and um but back to your question it's really one of the few times in my life that my brain's silent and so i do feel like god can speak through that it's become a habit to pray for the family and the children that i'm painting at that time so that's kind of like a good meditation in a way or prayer a lot of my art comes from dreams and i think god talks through you know to me in that way Oh, um, girl, let's go there. Yeah. Um, yes. Actually, so you've got my Instagram pulled up. That, yeah. That most recent one is a really meaningful one. There's this family in Birmingham that had twins with a genetic anomaly. And it's a very sad story. Both children have passed away. And oh. um, anyways, the family's incredibly just loved. And uh, the father's a, a doctor and his residency class commissioned me for um, a painting for their first daughter that passed away a few years ago. So this one you've got pulled up of this little girl standing in the water was commissioned for the second one. And they both, these giant paintings hang in children's hospital in memory of these children. And um, they called me about the second painting and they were like, "Um, we want something with pink skies and butterflies. Uh And I was like, "Um, uh," like I had done the first one. Um, of a little girl jumping into a, a father's arms. Okay. And um, the the symbolism there was so obvious of, you know, it looks like Jesus pulling this little girl like out of the water, you oh know, and, my goodness. Um, and that uh, struck me. That was a photo, I, uh, a photograph I painted from Lee Weber in um, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, they, they said Beautiful. pink skies and butterflies. And I was like, Ooh, I, I don't do pink skies. I don't do butterflies. And I even suggested other artists to like, maybe yeah. do You're that. Like, this isn't for me. And they were yeah. like, yeah, no, no, it's gotta be you. Cause it needed to match. And like, and I was like, good point. And, um, anyways, that night I just, I don't know, just the kind of the image came to me and I'd already had a photograph. So I incorporated those, the pink skies in the, it's a reflection of a little girl standing, um, with a sunset. And I imagine her, um, looking towards the sunrise um, she's got butterflies on her dress and, um, it's called I'll sing on from that, uh, that hymn. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about? What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? And, um, anyways, at the end it's, you know, when, from when, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And, um, anyway, so that's, I feel like that was not from me. Like God just kind of showed me that in a dream. I knew exactly where the photograph was and I incorporated those, um, those special meaningful things about this child into that painting and and it just worked and anyways it's just it's beautiful i mean thanks. in the lyrics like you said and when from death i'm free i'll sing on i'll sing on and then at the end it says and through eternity i'll sing on i'll sing on and that is the name of the painting it's in the birmingham children hospital and 
in memory of these two girls. I mean, this is gorgeous. This is a legacy. I was, I'm honored and extremely humbled that I got to, to do something like that. So yeah. I and I never you, would have thought that I'd be asked to do something like that. And it was, it's very humbling. Um, yeah. And our children were the same age as, uh, like, I have a, a child that, would be the you know if these children were still living so yeah. and and at the time I was um having a really hard time with my my kiddo and mm-hmm. um you know motherhood's not not easy but yeah. it, it was the perspective that this gave me you know over and over again was just powerful you know? oh yeah yeah it refocuses you it mm-hmm. reminds you and it makes you grateful and Absolutely. you know thank god Thank God for our children. Thank God for people who recognize the gifting in you to say, no, it's got to be you. You have to do this hard thing. You have to paint this picture. You have to finish this. And now when people go by, I mean, the coloring of it, it brings people joy. Like I just imagine people stopping and looking and reading what the title of the picture is and seeing the artwork and and smiling with the like colors and how it is underwater and on top of the water. Yeah. Like just, there is something about water. There is just something about it. Right. It's just, I can breathe. It us. Yes, totally. It, it's something it's, I don't know, but to me, it's so much bigger than myself that it, I look at it and I'm like, there is a God. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I understand why you want to come back. Yeah. Yeah. It reflects the heavens. Totally. (gasps) Amen. (laughs) Amen, sister. Um, How, like, when did you start doing this with water? When did the water come into play? Because you were a dietitian, registered dietitian. Mm -hmm. When did that switch flip for you? That's a great question. Um, I think like eight years ago, the underwater portrait happened about eight eight years ago when I did like an Instagram, like, Hey, here's a, you know, share this and, um, like a giveaway or whatever. And it was a free commission. And somebody asked me to paint, um, these little boys, a picture of their boys underwater. And I was like, I can't do that. They're green. And then there was this voice in my head that was like, well, paint them green, you know? And, um, (laughs) anyway, it's so, it's one of my favorite things. And it's so, you know, I've evolved a lot as an artist since then. Um, I, I do enjoy, I like watching my art change over time, but also there's something about my earlier works that are so free and I don't, not childlike, but just like not as like tight, you know, yeah. um, yeah. that I just love. And I, I still love that piece. Actually, I always joke with um, the woman every now and then I see, um, I see her. I'm like, it looks just like my boys. Like I painted it when I had one and, um, now I have, I have two boys and a daughter and it looks just like my boys. Like I would buy it back from her in a second. Like, really? You're like, I need that back because <laughs> it was kind of free, but whatever. Exactly. <laughs> like, I would well, pay so much starting, money for that. Yeah. Yeah. When you're um, starting, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. well, this is my starting rate. Like right, I don't right. know. I'm learning how this all works. So children and swimming, I mean, is there any happier memory you have as a child, you know? No. Um, and and a, what a great way to remember your child. Right. You know? I like to say that, you know, we're all artists. I told you that earlier. I spoke to the, the school I went to, Episcopal Day School, probably a few years ago, and I had the whole gym in front of me. Uh, my sister, like, roped me into this. I was, thought I was talking to one class, and it was, like, the entire school. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, kindergartners were first and it went all the way up to eighth grade. And, um, oh my goodness. And, and that's a big school. Right. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm talking to the kindergartners and I said, how many of y'all are artists? And each one of them raised their hand, like hundred percent. And I went back and it was like first eighth grade, second grade. By the time I got to third grade, you know, it was 20% were artists. And by the time we got to fourth and fifth grade, five, you know, five, 10%. And then in eighth grade, there was like one kid that was like, yes, I'm an artist. And the kids, the teachers were all kind of looking around like, wow, what just happened here? You know, 100% of the kindergarten class and, you know, one kid out of eighth grade are artists, you know? Yeah. And, and then I said, okay, um, raise your hand if you um, are a competitive swimmer. Okay, and a handful of people raise their hand. Swimming is surprisingly not a big sport here in Pensacola, but <laughs> yeah. that's another subject. I don't know how, I don't get it. but yeah. I mean, anyways, we have tons not a of thing indoor that pools, we do, but which um, is weird, but yeah, yes. So, anyways, you know, a handful of kids um, raise their hand, like, "Hey, I'm on a swim team," you know. And I said, "Okay, hands down." I said, "All right, raise your hand if you enjoy swimming," and every kid raised their hand. Of course, the teachers did too. Like mm-hmm. everybody raised their hand. Not one person in there 
you know, didn't enjoy swimming. Yeah. And, um, and I said, that's what art is like that. You don't have to be amazing at it. You don't have to sell it to get benefit from it. Like we were made in his image yeah. and we were made to be creators. I yes. Think. Oh no. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 I mean, he is the creator. We who get endorphins from creating exactly. things. Like yes. decorating cookies makes you happy. Exactly. You know? so yes. I, I, I equate making art with swimming. Like you, you just, it's just, it's good for your body. It's, yes. It makes you happy, you know, anyway. So that's kind of a long story, but I just, I love the, I love the idea that like some of my happiest childhood memories were in the water and on the water. We, I just, we were always outside. I lived in a bathing suit and, um, you know, I just, I kind of still do. Yeah. <laughs> it's I really mean, great. I haven't grown up. I'm still doing art. <laughs> yeah. I live on the beach and I'm still creating cool yeah. things for God's glory. Yeah. I love that you have said yes to do this career that is I, I want to say off the beaten path, but it's not a typical thing. And I'm sure it took confidence to be able to leave a job that's normal. On this podcast, we're all about the testimony of like how God led you to do the thing that you're doing now. Like no matter what your position is, use it to broadcast God's love. Amen. And like no matter where you are, like right mm -hmm. now, like draw near to Jesus and he will draw near to you and and just love him and talk to him right now where you are and thank him. And I just want to know with your story, how did the transition happen with being a registered dietitian and having that confidence to leave and paint? I'm very thankful. You know, I, I have a husband who had an income. So yeah. however, we still needed my income. We did get to a point where I was like, I'd like to take this leap and go part time with nutrition. I was a full time registered dietitian at UAB Hospital. And I um, went part time and started a nutrition consulting company at nursing homes at multiple nursing homes. But I would have one day a week uh, with my child in daycare and me not working. And so that felt kind of selfish and wasteful, which I don't know why we moms do that to ourselves. Oh, but, I do um, too. Right. Like, oh, I've got to be producing. I've got exactly. to do something. Yeah. Um, but I turned that, that became a day that I would paint. I would have two or two to four a month, you know. Um, and my child was in um, daycare part time. And that kind of started my discipline of painting in the mornings for four or five hours. And beforehand, it had been like, oh, you know, my husband used to laugh that like the moon had to be in the right phase. And the stars had to align for me to paint. And then it became like, no, you're my kids in school for five hours straight. Like, I don't care how you feel or what temperature it is outside. Like you've got this time to do it, you know? Um, and I think limitations like that can actually spur us on to make things and to be yes. creative and to build things because it's like, I've got X amount of time. Got to get it done. Exactly. You know? Oh yeah. And so being a mom, like having that, whereas beforehand, before I had children, I felt like I had a lot of free time and yet I wasn't, I wasn't creating as much as I would have liked or exactly. nearly as much as when my time was limited. Also in that time, I loved, I loved being a mom, but it, it was, it was a hard time in my life. I wasn't yeah. near my mom and my sister. I wasn't near family and painting kind of became a, just a, a lullaby, I guess, in a way. <laughs> like, yeah, it just became an outlet where I could just be alone and not be pulled upon at every moment <laughs> exactly well you could just be you could be right. what god created you to do which was i mean i know he created you to do a lot of things like be a mom and be a wife and right. and be an artist right. and he gave you what a gift oh thanks that he gave you this time to be like okay now this is where you do this and what if it was god's still small voice being like okay here's the opportunity yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I will say that in t there have been times and now I've got three children, they're nine, seven and four. Okay. Um, but there have been times that art became such a, a draw for me that I feel like I was, I mean, not neglecting, but like, yeah. like Sunday nights, I could not wait to go to work. Um, just in a way, my, my, my work felt easier than being a mom. Yeah. You know, being, being a mom's busy busy yeah. and and out of control right and <laughs> anyways i'd say about a year yeah. and a half ago i had this realization i was like pointing fingers pointing a finger at my friend like you work too hard and you need to take it back and you know it was like god was like hey check, you know you you're doing the same and 
when you love your job, which is something I try not to brag about because that's kind of like obnoxious to say. I, I love, I love what I do. Yeah. But um, that that can get in the way of what you need to do and your more important jobs. Like my most important job is being a mom and yeah. a wife, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if that's all I'm thinking about is this career that I love, that makes me money, that's like makes, you know, it, it's just, it. I felt like my life was out of balance. And about a year and change, um, I started taking Mondays not in the studio. Um, and it, that's a very privileged thing. Like I don't have to go oh, into no, no, no. work, yeah. right? Off in quotations, because I yes. basically like work the whole time. But it's more like family administrative stuff. Yes, you know? but let me take a break here in what you're saying. And just for the person listening, just know that Sarah is coming from a place of working in sales. And there is sacrifice. Anyone who works in sales, you have sacrifice. Right. Because you don't know where that next paycheck is coming from. I mean, right. it is like a relying on God 100% like not even joking. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, yeah, that's my job. I rely on God. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> to bring in what he wants. Right. To, so to take a step back and yeah. be like, am I going to make less money? Yes. Um, but I just felt really yes. imbalanced with my work life and family life. Yeah. And so Mondays, I'm not in my studio. I am doing laundry <laughs> and I am meal planning and going to the grocery store and um, making doctor's appointments and all the things. And I feel like it's, it's given me a better balance the rest of my week. And um, I'm a little more oh. present with my kids. And yeah, I don't know. So that was a really good I felt like that was a really good step back that I took that I'm actually like, still doing, you know, almost 18 yeah. months later. I like know. that. Yeah, okay, right. so like spring is coming up. Yeah. This is airing the first week of February. So it's, uh, you know, spring is coming. And there's a little Monday motivation for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get your house cleaned up and do a load of laundry. That was selfish. I needed that. I need to like do my laundry. <laughs> but um, but anyway, just checking out Sarah's artwork. If you guys are interested in more information, check her out on Instagram. I know it's your first, your maiden name and your last name studios. So it's Sarah Soul Web Studios on Instagram. And is there anywhere else? SSWstudios.com. And it's Sarah with an H and Soul with an E S O U L E. Yes. And then web is um, Sarah soul web is my, my Instagram name. Yeah. But you were talking about sales. Um, yeah. I mean, I am in sale. I'm not, I make, I create, and then I'm also, I'm self-represented, Yeah, you know, so I'm, yeah. I have to sell my art and yeah. that, and then back to the original, like when we were talking about earlier, like it, it felt so vain to promote myself, Yeah, you know, and um, I've kind of had to get over that. I've, I get back to the, like, um, I'm just, I'm trying not to point to myself as much. Um, and in doing that, I've, I've found freedom in promoting others. Uh, it would be a dream of mine to have a gallery and um, represent other artists as an artist. I think yes. an artist run gallery would be really cool. Um, and also just, um, I think like dealing with just putting myself out there on social media and letting people get to know me and hopefully not curating my life so much to others, you know, and just maybe that, that is how I've, I've been able to represent myself and make a living. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyways, it's, it's taken the icky, the, ick, the icky factor. Of, well, the, the vain, part, so the vanity. Yeah. I would love for you to encourage someone listening who thinks that their gifting is making them vain to where all they're thinking about is themselves, but they're not thinking about themselves. Maybe they're asking God, hey, God, what do you want me to do? Like they're in relationship with him and they know they have this calling on their life, but they don't know what to do with it. And God's maybe giving them clues of like, this is what I want you to do or, oh, talk to this person. He's just like opening little doors for them. Right. But they're held back by the thought of vanity or promoting yourself. Like yeah. we're taught not to like brag or talk about ourselves. And um, yeah, I mean a realtor, like any, anybody I'd say like promoting others as well is yeah. big and getting in like groups. Since I moved away from Birmingham, I've kind of lost like that artist community that I had up there, but um, cause we moved here during COVID. So I feel like I've also I haven't really like connected with a lot yes, of other yes. artists, but I'm trying to do that here more. Yeah, um, and you know Don. We yeah, met at yeah. Don's for Don Barton. Shout yes. out Don Barton. We love you, <laughs> Don Barton's Fourth of July party. Yeah, she's we an met. author, and um, yeah. yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. Um, so I feel like connecting with others and help promoting others and cross promotion helps. Um, 
but really looking at what you do is just being, um, where God has you and, um, and glorifying God and all that you do. And I mean, yes, we, we work for a paycheck, right? Like, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, anything that we do can bring joy to others. I was just thinking like, who in my life make, brings me consistent joy, like on a weekly basis Yeah, is my housekeeper. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I've, I've really, I mean it like, I don't, I cannot think of somebody that because makes she me gives that happy. To you. When I come home and that house is like nice and neat, I'm oh, just yeah. like, God bless I Kathy. Too. I love you, Kathy. <laughs> um, <and laughs> Susie, my little four-year-old, told me the other day that she wanted to um, she wanted to clean houses, and I was like, That is awesome! Like you can start with your bedroom, you know? Exactly. Yeah, girl. <laughs> but, and she said, I just like it when my room's neat, and I was like, I agree. Like mm-hmm. anything we do um, can be seen as a ministry. Yes. You know? And uh, what a gift that you can give someone else by doing what God has called you to do. Yes. I want to, you know, encourage you who's listening is to not think of whatever God has gifted you to do as vanity. Instead, look to God, acknowledge him in the gifting and ask him what he wants you to do next with what he's given you. You know, where does he want you to take that gifting to I, I, I'm like thinking of like a football right now in someone's hands. It. That's funny. <laughs> and they're like running for the touchdown and the gift is the football. And like <laughs> the people are going to try to tackle you. <laughs> That's so funny. You just have to like go for the touchdown. Uh, I actually, Corey Robertson, she um, has a quote that says, if you're carrying the football, you're going to get tackled. It oh, just like funny. popped up in my yeah. brain talking about gifting, but it's such a good quote because it's like, I mean, you're going to get tackled. Like you're stepping up and stepping out for God. I mean, Jesus, people hurt him. People put him to the cross. People killed him and he won. Like God's going to get the victory in your life, no matter what you think you are doing. That is not what you should be doing. Just keep doing doing it with God. Cause like we're doing things for God, you know, like, like this podcast, like my goal is for you to have a closer relationship with Jesus period, but like keeping that focus there and trusting God to provide in his timing. And okay, here's the other thing I want to ask you. I was saying, I went on a run today and I was just like thinking about this time with you today. And I have a girlfriend named Melissa Shoemaker who, when we get coffee, she'll say, how's your heart? Hmm. And that just popped up again about how is your heart? So I don't know why, but I don't even know how to phrase it. (laughs) Again, I am not the talent on this podcast, okay? Like our (laughs) guests are the talent. Um, But like, how is your heart when you are creating these pieces for other people? If I'm distracted and hurried and I don't know, I feel like that can kind of really affect my art. And uh, I think that it's funny taking a step back on Mondays and not painting, even though I really want to, um, and getting my life a little more in order, feeling more confident and that I'm prepared for the week has allowed me to have a calmer heart when I enter the studio Tuesday. Having that balance is really crucial for you. It is because uh, art has become such a, you know, those people that like have to work out. Are you one of those people? I am. I'm turning into that person. Yeah. Good for you. Sorry. (laughs) I know. Well, I now. <laughs> I'm I guess I get a lot of endorphins when I paint and and I like have to paint and I get really grumpy if I don't and uh anyways this past spring I tore my ACL. No, um, you did not. Yeah, I was snow skiing and it was anyways a mess. Um and so I couldn't paint for like a few months. I couldn't I mean I was miserable, like I was in constant pain. I had surgery, it was just I had a really long recovery. That's true. I did not see you jumping around on the inflatables at Dawn's <laughs> house. <laughs> yeah, no. And as much as I wish I would have been that person. But um, anyways, you know, I I can't rely on something external like art. Like anything can be taken away from us. And then, yes, it can. Yeah, anything. People, talents, um, our bodies. Businesses. um, Yes. And the only thing that's steadfast is his word. And um, I feel like it was the, the fact... I could not, I could not paint. Um, it, it, it was, it was like a, it was a good reminder that, um, that's not true contentment and that's yeah. not really what's going to bring me true happiness. Only the Lord can do that, you know? Yeah. Oh, what a pure heart. That's so good. 
What Bible verse is encouraging you in this season? Well, right now I'm all about balance and seasons. Um, And so I love, maybe it's cliche, but Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Mm. And that just, it's just a good reminder of seasons. I I saw some meme recently (laughs) about just, you know, look around you, like nothing's blooming. This is when plants like die back and go dormant. Like you don't have to always be producing and doing you know, and just, um, just store up and rest. And yeah. that, that was just a good reminder. And that, um, that Bible verse is, is a constant reminder that, um, there's seasons in our lives and, and some, some seasons are meant to, you know, further your career, you know, <laughs> and some yeah. seasons are meant to buckle down and, um, focus on your family and, and do a load of laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Or five, <laughs> in my oh, case. Oh, my goodness. You have three children. Yes. And at oh one point, they were like all bedwetters. So I don't know. It, we're we're past hard. that, though. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, it's so we're hard. That, but Because yeah, like right when you, in the morning, you see the bed sheet mm. and you're like, this is my, this is how I this start today. Yep. <laughs> this is how we start. It is. Oh, my goodness. Is there anything else you want to share? I'd love to talk about social media for a second. Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay. We were talking yeah. about that, um, about promoting that. Um, as a self, as a, as a self-represented artist, you know, that's how I've been able to be successful is yeah. Instagram. And so I have this like love hate relationship with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't ever want to be one of those people that like shows just the good parts of their life, um, or curates their life so much that it looks fake, you mm-hmm. know? On the other hand, I don't really believe in like dirty, dirt, like airing dirty laundry, you know, yeah. with my family or my kids or whatever. And I've kind of opened up my life to um, to people to be able to see how we live and who we are a little bit. And um, and I've enjoyed that aspect of it. But um, the cool thing is like every every other year, or I'll probably do it this year, but I will quit social media for Lent or something. Yeah. And it's always like, I'm like, I'm not going to sell anything or I used to feel this and it would all, I would always have some like off my website art would sell, which is, is pretty rare. It was like, God always provided, yeah. you know, it was like, it was almost like a, like fasting before a war or something yeah. like <laughs> how you would tell the Israel Israelites, like I would, I would quit doing this thing that I just knew it was the only reason I was like making money or able to do what I do. Mm-hmm. And then he would provide anyways. Yeah. Um, so that that's been a really cool, you know, aspect of that. But that's um, a great testimony of yeah. how God is faithful. Yeah. It is weird with social. I mean, I'm I'm off of it for the podcast and I'm hoping to bring someone on to like manage it. I just cannot do it. I compare myself too much to people. Oh yeah. That's my thing. Do you I, do that or no? I really I just like chatting with people. Like I'll post about a recent pa- painting and people are like you know, write like DM me and I'm like, yeah. Hey, how's it going? Like, it's like, I don't know. I'm very extroverted as yes, you are yes, as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. And I work alone. So I see it as like my community, community. a little bit. And I, I love that aspect. See, I need it. to see um, it like that. Yeah. Community. It just, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't have any balance. <laughs> I don't have any balance with it. I want to. And then it's nine or I guess, yeah, nine o'clock or eight o'clock. And I'm scrolling on social media. I just do not. I'm just bad. I'm bad, bad, bad. <laughs> if you don't like what you're seeing. So lately, I started following all these um, like parenting podcasts and like Dr. Yeah. Becky, Good Inside and like okay, Positive okay. Parenting Solutions. Anyways, I used to get online. It would be like all these beautiful homes and like decorators. HGTV, and stuff. and yeah. now lately it's like, this is how to gently, you know. Um, calm your child. And I'm like, oh, this is such a better, you know, this is so good. <laughs> so it's like, just go on and like activate any accounts like that fill you up, like yeah. a spiritual, you know, um, account, like a, a Christian account, like write in or, or something or yeah. share it. And then you'll see more of it. And it's just, it's a good reminder that we can like, 
you know, we can filter out the stuff that we don't need and it's true. filter in what we yeah. do, what we do want to see on a daily basis. Yes. Know? Yes. Thank you, God, for that. Right. <laughs> And I, um, I, had a, I had a Bible study teacher years ago talking about social media. And she was like, whenever you post, like, always be aware that something you might say or do, like, might um, mess with somebody's, what, what'd she call it? Um, discontentment meter. Uh, yeah. And Father's I, Day. Yes. Every Father's Day now, I'm like, well, I've only had one since my dad passed. But I'm just <sighs> like. I'm so sorry. I'm just yes. like, okay, y'all, enjoy your dad's, like. But that's my internal monologue. Like, yes, everyone Ugh. really go and enjoy your dads. And if you guys are fighting, like, say you're sorry and give him a hug. Like, right. Like, no, that's what I want that to that you're say. struggling yes. with, like, Satan pulls it up on your Instagram. I know. <laughs> I know. You know. Like, I remember at time, this is so Or an silly. advertisement. Oh, my gosh. It's so <laughs> like, silly. But, like, you know, my kid, like, wouldn't read. He hated books. Um, now he's like avid reader, but like, yes. I w- it's like, I would, you know, everybody was praising their children for their literacy. And I'm like, how, why am I only seeing this? You know, why is Jill so yes. good about <laughs> teaching Jack how to it's read? It's the stupidest thing yes. that you see yeah. when I have, a, I have friends that have, um, have husbands that have struggled with addiction or something. Yeah. And then it's like Father's Day, like all they see is people praising their amazing husbands. Yeah, and yeah. They don't really have the greatest husbands and exactly. that's all they're seeing, yes. you know, or, or if you're single, all you're going to see is people getting engaged or, or celebrating an anniversary. Yeah. It's totally not from God. You okay. know what I mean? <laughs> so here's, here's where we land this plane on social media. Post something today from God's word, like oh, post God, a scripture. Yeah. Like that's our challenge. That's good. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it because, okay, God's word like God's never going to fail you and his word is perfect. Like it will never fail. It is historical. It is correct. So if you post like today, if you posted how you were feeling, that's going to change. But if you posted this challenge that we're posing to you right now, if you're on social, of course, like if you're not, then, you know, obviously don't post for you. (laughs) (laughs) Who's cool. (laughs) But, um, like our challenge is to post a Bible verse, post a Bible verse that's encouraging you in this season with the heart of encouraging the person who may read it to draw closer to Christ. That's yeah. Great. So we, we like to challenge people on this podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, let's go. Um, anyway, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, can you just tell us one more time how to connect with you? And if we want to see your artwork, where are the go-to places sure. for that? My name is Sarah soul Webb. Mm-hmm. And my Instagram and Facebook are Sarah Soul Web Studios. And then my website is sswstudios.com. Awesome. I really appreciated this. Thank you so much. Ditto. Thank you for coming over. I was so nervous. I, like, I really was acting like I was having to do like a, like come up with a um, Sunday school lesson. <laughs> you were not <laughs> yeah no that's what I was acting like and then I you know I got I, I like re-listened to a few of your recent ones yeah. too and I was like she just has fun and talks about like you know what God's doing yeah, in your just, life yeah you just tell I don't us know why I was like life. completely overthinking it <laughs> <laughs> well I'm so grateful that you came on because when I met you at Dawn's and then when I saw your Instagram I was just like oh, this girl loves the Lord. Like we need to hear from her. But the point of coming on is to encourage the listeners. So just how you were saying about doing your artwork for another family member or or not family member, but for a a client, like to be a blessing to them. It's the same thing with this podcast. So you come on, you share your story about how God changed everything for you in the Mm -hmm. best way and has just been the artiste of your story and um it to encourage the person listening to step out into faith and to step into what god has called them to do um and do that thing not only for god but with him and as he is guiding you to do what he's called you to do so we just need you whoever's listening to do what god's called you to do whether that's paint the picture or do the podcast or write the book or start the business or not even start the business pray a prayer for a friend who needs it like mm, yeah. whatever god is calling you to do just to be faithful in that right now for his glory and we're just going to wrap up and this he might have yeah. you at home with three kids you know and he might. And god bless that like that's that's amazing you know and yeah. so be where you are and in, in the season that that is right now you know exactly yes and 
Um, we're just going to pray right now. So join us in prayer, no matter where you are and what you're doing. If you're driving, though, like keep looking at the road <laughs> and Sarah and I will pray for you. But uh, Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for Sarah. Father, we just ask and pray for whoever's listening and just for anyone right now who is just thinking about Jesus and having a closer relationship with you, God, just pray that you draw them closer to you in whatever way you want to do that. Just do what you want. And I pray that they go to your word and read more about you. And we have faith that you are going to show them exactly what they need to learn more about you. Father, decrease us and increase you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders, to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. (laughs) (laughs)